Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Good morning, Good Shepherd. Good it's time to praise the Lord. Yeah. Anybody glad to be here live one more day? Yeah. Let's praise the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go for it. One voice say 
deserves our praise. He deserves your glory. He deserves the honor. And he deserves the praise. Somebody just shout out, Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we came here to lift you up. We came here to bless you. Because he's so good. I feel something already. I said he's so good. Lord, we lift you up. Can we just worship the Lord, everyone? Can you open your mouths and bless the Lord right where you are? And begin to tell the Lord how good he's been to you. Just talk to him. You know what the Lord has done for you. You know how many ways he's made for you. We just want to love on him just for a few minutes. Come on, tell him how good he's been to you. He's such a good God. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. That's what he is to us. Hallelujah. song says you've been so good to me everybody let's sing this praise to the Lord say Lord you are good Lord you are good you've been you've been so good Lord, Lord you are good you've been better you've been better than good I can't praise you enough I owe you my life I owe you can't praise you enough, even if I try. But you've been. Is that your testimony, good shepherd? Stay right there. You've been. So good. Talk directly to him. Say you've been. So good. So good. To me. Take it up, let's go. Oh, say, Lord, you are good. You. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better. You've been better than good. I can't praise you I enough. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. I owe you my life. Can't praise. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try. Even if I try. So good. So good. You've been so good. You've been so good. So good. You've been, You've been so good. So good. To me, say to me. We going up. Oh, Lord. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. begin to think about what God has done for you and tell him how good he's been to you. He's really been good. Better than he, we can be to ourselves. He's been to me. Can we take it up one more time? to say you've been, you've been so good, so good. 
you gon' make it. They said you wouldn't make it. They said you wouldn't be here. They said you wouldn't qualify for them. But look at you now. He's been better. Take it up. So many doors. So many doors. You 
stupid. So good. I'm trying to leave it alone. You So good. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You've been so faithful to us, God. You've been so faithful to us, Jesus. That's why we praise you, Lord. That's why we lift you up and magnify your name. That's why our hearts are filled with praise. That's why our hearts are filled with praise. Because you've been better to us, God, than you've been to ourselves, God. You've been so good. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, we are grateful again to have this opportunity to stand before you in the stead of our Lord to share with you the Word of God. Thank you for tuning in this morning to our worship service. and We pray that it will be a blessing to you. Would you bow your heads with me now as we pray and ask God's blessings upon what we do? Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you now for our time together in the Word. We pray, O oh God, that you will give all of us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Give us the courage to put into practice every principle and precept that we learn today. And I thank you, Lord, for this signal honor and opportunity again to preach your Word to your people. Lord, give me what I don't have. Make preaching easy for me. Lord, as you manage my mind, amplify my voice, and set my soul ablaze with the Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You know, we're in our summer sermon series, and we're uh, endeavoring now to give you the next installment um, in that sermonic series entitled Picking Up Where We Left Off. I want to invite your attention this morning to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to be uh, considering the entire chapter as well as a portion of chapter 11. And so, of course, you know it's too lengthy for us to read. Um, but I just want to, if I can, uh, begin at verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm just going to read uh, just a little bit. And, um, and then we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us um, to make plain his word. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 1 from the New Living Translation of the Bible. The scripture reads this way. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. We'll stop right there. Again, the scripture says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God 
has set before us. I simply want to uh, talk to you this morning from this thought, I believe you can make it. I believe that you can make it. Uh, I want to give you just uh, a bit of um, historical background reference um, to the passage here in Hebrews chapter 12. And um, I want to set it up um, by saying that there is an underlying thought and theme that uh, this uh, Hebrew writer is trying to um, put forward. He's trying to help um, those to whom this letter is written. Um, he's trying to help them to overcome um, the spirit of defeat. You have to understand that the audience to whom this letter is addressed um, it was made up primarily of persons who were once Jews but had converted to Christianity. And over time, their conversion to Christianity has proven to be difficult for them uh, given the fact that they were seeking to live out their lives as Christians in the midst of a culture uh, that did not support them. In fact, the whole book of the book of Hebrews is uh, a letter of encouragement to those uh, Jews who have now converted to Christianity. It is to encourage them to, to not give up, to stay the course, and to understand that, that even though we know it is difficult for them, um, that we, uh, or rather the writer is still asking them um, to hang in there, not to throw in the towel, not to wave the white flag of surrender. May I suggest to you that this encouragement was needed uh, because they were uh, dealing with uh, an internal condition. It is what I've called already the spirit of defeat. They felt like they could not measure up. They felt like they could not continue on. They felt like uh, that the future uh, would never be reached. They felt like uh, that this was simply too hard for them. They had to deal with too much in order for them to maintain their Christian faith. And so what the writer of the book of Hebrews does, he helps them to understand that they can, in fact, uh, remain faithful. He helps them to understand that this spirit of defeat within them can in fact be overcome. Let me say a couple of things before I just give you three little points from the text, but let me say this by way of introduction as I help us to understand again uh, this spirit of defeat and, and how it can be overcome and why it needs to be overcome. Because first of all, a spirit of defeat is self-imposed. I said a spirit of defeat is self-imposed. It has to do with how one sees themselves. And can I tell you, child of God, if you don't see yourself as victorious, if you don't see yourself as being able to complete a task, if you don't see yourself being able to do a thing, guess what? However you see yourself is what's going to manifest itself in your life. Can I suggest to you that this self-imposed as it were, spirit of defeat um, has to do with the fact that sometimes we are forced to live out our lives surrounded by negative people. Um, we don't want to admit that out loud, but sometimes the company that we keep uh, has a very strong tendency to influence our behaviors, and it has a, a strong ability to influence our perception about ourselves. You surround yourself with negative people. You begin to compare your life with the life of your neighbor. Amen. May I suggest to you that if you uh, are, are living your life as a Christian and you are in community with a person who is not a Christian and you determine that by comparing your life to theirs that their life uh, as a non-Christian is easier or better than your life as a Christian, Amen. You'll begin to speak that negative and neutralizing narration 
to yourself and you will tell yourself that it would be easier for me, for me to give up the fight. It would be easier if I let down my God. It would be easier for me if I went back to the way things used to be. And I want to suggest to you that the way uh, that this, uh, this spirit of defeat can be overcome that we it has to be a change in the self amen whereas this uh spirit of defeat is self-imposed there is then the need as you remember as you may remember me mentioning uh in bible study a few months ago there's there's a need for self-transformation amen because the spirit of defeat must be self-corrected here it goes if it's self-imposed then it must be corrected by the self or the self needs to be corrected. I believe that the author of the book of Hebrews understands emotionally, as it were, and mentally and spiritually, amen, what these uh, converted believers were dealing with. And so he writes the letter of encouragement. And mind you now, there are, I believe there are 13 chapters in the book of Hebrews in every last one of them is an attempt to encourage people of faith. Notice what he says beginning in the first verse of Hebrews chapter 12. The writer says, listen, you can overcome the spirit of defeat that's within you. Amen. You can overcome the negative narration that you have been telling yourself. He says, and this is how you do it. First of all, I want you to pay attention to a picture of consistent faith. I told you at the beginning, uh, children of God, that uh, we were not just going to preach from Hebrews chapter 12. We were going to take a moment to reference a portion of Hebrews chapter 11. And there in Hebrews chapter 11, the writer of the book of Hebrews, he begins to explain to his audience and list for them uh, several names, persons who are listed on uh, the faith hall of fame, as it were, persons who endured under their contextual circumstances people amen who remain faithful and true to god and some of them the writer says he says look he says some of them they were faithful unto death and many of them never inherited for themselves personally all that god had promised it was it was succeeding generations that came after them amen, that were able to realize the promise that God had made to them, but they were faithful to see it through all the way to the end. And what the writer of the book of Hebrews is saying to them, and what I'm trying to say to you, is that you can make it, amen. You have to look at sometimes at other persons, amen, and see them to be a picture of consistent faith, amen. Therefore, seeing as we have a great cloud of witnesses, see, can I tell you, my friends, that not only is the spirit of defeat self-imposed, but can I tell you sometimes it is further bolstered, amen, by the enemy, amen, segregating us, amen, from others and uh, of, of causing us to fall into a place of isolation. And listen, that's where the enemy begins to talk to you and tell you that you can't. Come on, you're not going to make it. You're, you don't have enough. You don't have what it takes. But can I tell you, you have around you a great cloud of witnesses. While the devil's got you off in a corner, you need to remember, child of God, that there is nothing that has befallen you but such as is common to man. There is somebody somewhere who has gone through a similar set of circumstances, and it was expected of them by God to be faithful, and the same is expected for you and me. I said, you have a picture of consistent faith. There are persons, come on, amen, that precede and predate you. Come on. And, and they're the life that they live, amen, can serve as a model for you and I. Amen. The Bible talks about, amen, those persons who, amen, under difficult circumstances, amen, some of them having to believe what appeared to be an incredulous word from God and to hold on to it. Amen. Even though persons come on and within their contemporary context did not support them, some were even thought to be a little off and crazy, but they held on to the word of God and they lived out their lives faithful to God. 
amen, consistently. And I want to tell you that we have our own set of challenges, but I believe you can make it. Come on. This is about moving forward. This is about picking up where you left off. Amen. Sometimes you got to draw on, amen, others who have gone through difficulties, but yet they were determined to go all the way. Amen. I think about the group of persons in my life that I refer to as the we of me. You've heard me say this before, that because nobody is an island unto themselves. There, there are some persons who have helped to shape and form uh, the lives that we now live and lead. And, and some of those persons may still be in our lives, but some of them, the Lord has called them uh, from earth to eternity. Amen. They're resting, awaiting to receive their reward, but we remember them and their influence in our lives and how important they were to the persons that we are today. And can I tell you that you look at them and you know that they had, come on, limited resources. They had, for sure, their own set of challenges, but yet, amen, they continue to sing, amen, the refrain of that hymn that says, my faith looks up to thee thou lamb of Calvary. They continue to remain faithful. I'm saying to you, child of God, amen, that like them, we can be a picture of consistent faith. Come on, walk with me in the text. I'm not going to keep you long at all this morning. Amen. I'm going to treat this uh, installment of the sermon series like it's show enough summer. Can I tell you, amen, that you have a picture of consistent faith? But secondly, you also have the chastening of a patient father. Notice what the, the verses say uh, there in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. It talks about that we have the chastening of God as our father. Can I tell you that you can make it? Because there is a God who has an internal investment in you. Amen. And he does not want to see you fail. He wants to see you finish. It, so much so that if he has to correct you and chasten you, amen, and, and, and I, and to literally beat us back, amen, so that we'll put our feet again on the path, amen, he will do so. Can I tell you that whom the Lord loves, he also chastens. And listen to me, I know that we don't like it. We don't like chastening when it has happened, but it is necessary. And sometimes, come on, it is God way of revealing God's commitment to us, amen, to make sure, amen, that we don't continue to make a fool of ourselves and fail in our assignment. The Lord will correct us. I want you to hear this. You and I need, amen, the chastening of a patient father, amen. The Lord could see us <clears throat> giving up, succumbing to a spirit of defeat, saying to ourselves, we can't make, didn't nobody tell us that, God didn't tell us, the Holy Spirit didn't reveal that. That's just something we came up with on our own because we didn't feel like finishing. Amen. We said it to ourselves so long till we started to believe it. Amen. We even started to justify and make excuses. Amen. For why we were unfaithful. But I tell you that the Lord doesn't give up on us. He can look at us and say, you know what? <clears throat> They've done this on their own. I'm just going to leave them. Amen. To deal with the consequences of their behavior and suffer the recompense of their error. But the Lord doesn't do that like a father. Come on, because he is connected. Because between the father and the child, there is a relationship that cannot be severed. Amen. <clears throat> there are attempts to there are attempts to rupture the relationship, but it cannot be severed. And because of this covenantal connection that God has with us, amen, he will chasten us. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. Listen, he will literally whip us back into shape. He'll put us on the path. Amen. He'll show us the error of our ways. And I don't know about y'all, child of God. Amen. I know I need the chastening of a patient father, not an impatient, come on, father, but uh, the chastening of a patient father. I need that in my life. Amen. I don't believe I have made it this far without divine correction. None of, none of us can make it where we ought to be in God and in the kingdom. Amen. Without having to be corrected sometimes. So we have, we have a picture of consistent faith then we have the chastening of a patient father. You're going to make it. Let me just tell you, because God loves you and because God is unwilling to give up on you, you're going to make it. 
Amen. Because of that divine investment, when the Lord will correct us and check us and corral us if necessary. Amen. I'm telling you, chasing us whenever we need it. Amen. For that reason alone, you're going to make it. Amen. Because the Lord is not going to see us fail. Let me go another further and tell you that you have the picture of consistent faith. You have the chastening of a patient father. But lastly, you have the comfort of forgiveness through worship. I, I, I hear the writer of the Hebrews tells them, it says, come on. He says, come on. He says, come, let us draw near. <laughs> and, and, says, and he says to them, I don't want you to get in your mind the image of how worship was done with Moses and others in the Old Testament. He says, because they were afraid to approach God. There was a sense of uh, awe that really led to apprehension. Amen. There was a fear that existed among those who would worship God. That's why you even have, as it were, uh, the, old, uh, the Old Testament system of worship uh, concerning the tabernacle. And you would have, of course, the intermediaries, as it were, priests. Amen. But, who would uh, go literally, as it were, or metaphorically, as it were, uh, into the presence of God, amen, on behalf of the people because the people, amen, were either afraid, amen, or because of their sin, they were not allowed to enter the presence of God. But what, this, is what, this is what I want to tell you, amen. Uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, come on, you have the comfort of, we don't have to be scared. You have the comfort, amen, of worship, knowing that it is in the place of worship amen that you will be forgiven listen it is a forgiveness that you can realize after you've been chastened let me try that one more time he says come come god will correct us but don't be scared i mean i, I i'll tell this story amen that uh my, my father was a uh 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 uh, uh, uh he was scary amen to me as a child i mean his voice he my mother would talk all day and we just kind of look at her and and uh you know and, and she was the disciplinarian, but my father very, very rarely had to discipline us. All he had to do was look in our direction. Amen. There was a fear and an apprehension. And I want to tell you, sometimes uh, sometimes you become afraid of the one who has corrected you. But what the Hebrew writer is trying to get us to understand is that the same uh, father that chastens us is the same father that will forgive us. Come, come now. He says, come, come quickly. Amen. And, and, and approach God in worship. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, the Hebrew writer fleshes it out a little more there in the passage and, and says that uh, as we worship God, amen, and experience forgiveness, amen, for our own sins, amen, that that worshipful attitude is fleshed out in how we deal with one another, living at peace with others, amen, doing our, the best that we can. I wish somebody would talk to me here, amen. Amen. To, 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 to live at peace with others, even those who are not supportive, amen, of our decision, amen, to live our life as Christ lived his, amen. Listen, you ain't got to fight with nobody just because you love the Lord, amen. You ain't got to ball up your fist and be mad with the whole world just because, amen, you live in a context that does not support you, amen, for your decision of faith. Listen, he says, listen, you settle in and you get your strength from God. Amen. Come, he says, come and worship. And I'm telling you, child of God, that worship gives you a confidence. Amen. That says to you, I can complete my assignment. I can finish my journey and I can do it with faith. I know, amen, that God is on my side. I understand, amen, that if necessary, if I drift off the path, the Lord is going to correct me. And, and, and should I forget, amen, I'm counting on the Holy Spirit to remind me, amen, that there are many people who were in a similar set of circumstances as I and if they can make it so can I here's my word to you this morning child of God I believe you can make it the real question is do you believe you can make it I believe you can make it I believe you can do just fine I believe you can finish amen the task you can complete the assignment you can go all the way you can reach the finish line in Jesus name the question is do you believe you can make 
make it. I'm telling you, if others made it, you can make it. I'm telling you, child of God, if you let God correct you, amen, you'll be able to make it. I'm telling you, if you would just maintain, amen, a posture of worship, amen, listen, and just wrap, amen, your arms around the one who's trying to get his arms around you and allow yourself to be loved uh, by God and allow yourself to be supported by God. Allow yourself, child of God, to be empowered by God. I'm telling you that in the strength of God, you will be able to make it. I know you want a little more. I told you I'm going to treat this installment of this demonic series like it's summertime. Amen. And I, I got somewhere else to be. I'm not going to keep you long. I want you to hear this word uh, this morning. I want you to get it in your heart that you can make it. You can pick up where you left off. You can move forward. Amen. In your life. You got you can overcome that spirit of defeat. Amen. You listen, listen, you got to learn not only, amen, how to allow God to transform your life. But while God is transforming you, you must then begin to affirm the transformation <laughs> and declare it is so. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil had me scared. He had me cowering in the corner. He had me feeling defeated even before I got started. Amen. But now I've been transformed. Amen. I'm in Christ now. And I know that anyone who's in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things pass away and all things becoming new. I'm declaring over somebody this morning that wherever you was, wherever you was, whatever you were doing, I'm telling all of that's over now. Amen. You're getting ready to pick up where you left off from before. Amen. You're getting ready to move forward in the name of the Lord. I'm declaring over you today, child of God. Amen. I am affirming the transformation that is taking place in your life. Amen. You have been corrected by the Lord. You have been comforted by his presence. Come on. Amen. You have been lifted by the picture of consistent faith of those around you. I'm telling you, child of God, you're going to be just fine. And so I, I pray even now, as I leave you this morning, I pray that you will receive this word and you will begin to say to yourself, amen, that I am an overcomer, that I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me. I am not defeated. Praise the Lord. I feel like preaching. I said I wasn't going to do it. I said, listen, you, you got to tell yourself. Amen. You got to affirm the transformation that is yet occurring in your life. You, you have to believe, amen, that by the grace of God, I can stand. Amen. In the power of God, I can make it. Hallelujah. And if God be for me, amen, can't nobody be against me. You got to believe. I said, you got to believe it. I already believe it for you. I believe it with everything that is within me. As a matter of fact, can I tell you, I have seen over the course, amen, that I've been in ministry. I've seen people get up off the mat. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil, amen, thought he had knocked them down for the last time. But I've seen people get up off the mat, amen, only to fight again. I've seen God raise up the downtrodden. And I've seen God lift up the head that has been bowed down low. I've seen God. God heal sick bodies. I said, I said, I've seen God. Amen. Save lives. Amen. That were bound for hell. I'm telling you, child of God. Amen. That as long as you have, amen, this relationship with God. Amen. I want to encourage you today and tell you that you can make it. I believe it. Heaven believes it. The question is, do you still believe it? That's our word for today. I believe you can make it. I know you can. I know you can. I know you can. I said, I know you can. I, matter of fact, I want to tell somebody, look like everybody know it but you. Everybody knows you're going to be just fine. Everybody knows you're going to survive this. Everybody has that sense. Come on. Amen. In the Holy Spirit. Amen. That you are going to make a comeback. You're going to rebound. Praise the Lord. You're going to pick up where you left off. And not only that, you're going to make some progress. You're going to move forward. As a matter of fact, I want to tell the devil while I'm talking, don't you look for us to be in the same place where you last saw us. We're, we've moved on from there. Glory to your name. Don't look for me at my last address because I don't live there anymore. 
Matter of fact, I'm announcing. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I'm announcing in the spirit, hallelujah, that this is the last time you're going to see me like this. Glory to God. This is the last time you're going to see me like this, feeling defeated. My lips poked out, acting like I can't make it. I'm going to stand up in my faith. I'm going to trust God. And I'm praying that you'll do the same. Listen, we got so much in store that's waiting on us in God. Amen. I want you to join me in it. Amen. I, I, I want you to participate in it. I want you to be a part of what the Lord is doing in this new season. But you're going to have to believe. Believe in God. And believe in yourself. Father, we love you and thank you this morning for the richness of your word. And today, Lord, I am truly trusting you to speak to your people by way of your spirit. I pray, God, that a rhema word will reach every ear and every heart that is open to you. I'm praying, God, today that you will talk to us in our native tongue. Talk to us in our own language. May there be no discrepancy. May there be no confusion. May we be clear about everything that the Spirit is trying to say. I'm praying, God, that someone will hear your word, will rise up in their faith, and they will take authority over the enemy. And they'll start moving forward. And this will be the last day that they will be stuck. Glued to a place. They were only meant to be temporarily. Lord, I pray for progress. I pray for momentum in Jesus' name. And I declare it is so. Over everyone who's listening. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, keep us safe while we travel to and fro. May your presence surround us and remain with us until the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is in his matchless name we pray. And everyone who loved the Lord said, Amen. And amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Amen. We give God the praise for our praise team. They're coming back and they're going to minister to us in song. Don't you cut off the broadcast just now. Hang out there with us for just a few more moments. Amen. And the Bible says in Matthew 26 and 30 that Jesus' disciples, amen that they left singing a hymn. We're going to leave singing and praising God this morning. I want to thank you, those of you who were able to volunteer with us on this past Wednesday. Amen. As we sought to feed uh, the city of Petersburg the res and its residents, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming out. And uh, we look forward, amen, for you being able to uh, volunteer with us on next month. Again, uh, we look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. Should the Lord say the same for our Bible study? I asked you guys to put in the comment section, amen, uh, a topic that you would like for us to share. I think I have the first one. We're going to take a stab at that one. But you can get even on this broadcast, if you have a topic of interest, amen, that you want us to share uh, on in Bible study on Monday nights, please put it in the comment section. I will look at it and uh, I will take uh, your uh, suggestions uh, to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And prayerfully, we'll be able to come back and we'll talk about those things um, that are of interest to you. God bless you until we see you again. How many of you know God said he will be with us? No matter what the situation is, we come to encourage and to let you know God said he would be with us. He'll be with you. How about that? Everybody help me say God. God said it would be with me. That he'll be with me. God said it would be with me. God. God said it would be with me. Said he'll be with me. God said it would be with me. Ooh, God. God said it would be with me. Said he'll be with me. God said it would be with me. No matter what I'm dealing with. God said it said he'll be with me. God said he would be with me. Oh, through the 
a sure foundation. God said he would be with me. And you can stand on his word. God said he would be with oh, me. Oh, through the soul. Through the soul. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.